Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. And we just thank and praise God for being in the midst. He said, where there's two or three gathering, he will be in the midst. And we just thank God for being in the midst of us this morning. Amen. It's not enough words I can say to give him thanks. It's not the praise that I can do to give him thanks. Yeah. It's all what he did for us this morning. I have to give him thanks right now. Yeah. I don't know what the later on going to be like, but I'm thanking him for right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yeah. This morning he gave me a word. He said, bless it. No, hold on. You shall do well and well. You should do good and well doing. If you, in due season, if you faint not. Amen. He said we should do well yeah. in due season, uh, if we faint not. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I thank you. I don't know what all that means, but I thank you for it, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, praise God for my pastor. Thank you, praise God for my lady C. And, and Elder Jones and, and Elder Lampkin and her absence. Thank you, praise God, for each and every one of you that make up this great church. Oh, yeah. We're going to go before the throne of grace and mercy. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Glory. What you need from God, he got it. Yeah. What you need from him, you, he got it. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. We just want to thank and praise God for this morning. Oh, yeah. Lord, we come to you as almost as we know how, God. We need your help. We need your mercy, God. Oh, yeah. We ask you to move in our midst, God. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. We ask you to have your way, God.
Let all my 
you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of God. We are glad that you are here today and also viewing us online. Amen. Many people are on vacation, but look at somebody. Tell somebody, Pastor Colas is glad that you are here. Amen. I am so glad that you are here. You are bound with us. Amen. Through this little heat. Amen. Amen. We have called almost every air conditioner company. And how many of y'all know they're going to take their time coming out? Amen. They're going to come out when they get ready. But I'm so glad that every Sunday you decide to come right here to the ship. And I'm so glad to see everybody coming in or walking in and sitting down. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming. Look at somebody on the other side of the church and just wave at them right quick. Just wave at them. We can't hug you, but we'll wave at you. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for giving. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for giving. I have learned from Elder Jones. I don't know if she know she knows that she have taught me this or not. But I have learned to sow into something bigger than me. When I want God to do something for me, I'll make sure that I sow into something bigger than me. And nothing is bigger than God. Hallelujah. I said nothing is bigger than God. And I want to sow into God. God, whatever you are doing in this season, please don't do it without me. And one way that God sees our faith is through our giving. And I'm going to challenge everyone to give. And man, God has kept us. And that's the least that we can do is be faithful with our giving. Sister Jackie is coming. The giving information is on your screen. Amen. The giving information is on your screen. Amen. And I want you to stand and bring your tithes and offering to the Lord. Amen. Everyone standing in the sanctuary. And let's bring your tithes and offering to the Lord. Amen. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay
approach the word of God. Stand with me and let's go to the book of Judges, chapter number six. Judges, chapter number six, beginning at verse number one. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. Please stand with me if you will. The book of Judges, chapter number six. Beginning to air verse number 11. Once you have it, shout amen. amen. Now the angel of the Lord came, sat on the terrible at Ophrah, which belongs to Jephthah, the Abazarite. While his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, almighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers reaccounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hands of the Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not, do not I send you. And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Go back. Hallelujah. To verse number 15. Please, Lord, how can I serve Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I have I, I am the least in my father's house. Next verse. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of the Midian. Did not I send you? Verse number 16. Go to the next verse. Next verse. There we go. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Somebody shout amen. amen. I want to preach today from the subject, and he still chose me. And he still, you may be seated. And he still chose me. Can, can you just say that to yourself and say, and he still chose me. Say it again. And he still chose me. And he still chose me. Say it again. And he still chose me. That's it. What a friend we have is Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. God, your word declares that you no longer call us servant, but you call us friends. And we are gathered here at true friendship to hear a word from you. And because we are your friends, your word declares that you will share the mystery of the kingdom to us. So God, speak a word to us. Although everyone here and on social media will hear the same word, we will not receive the same message. Some people will take this out of the word and some people will take that out of the word. But whatever purpose your word served today, your word will not return unto your board. And we thank you, Father, 
for your word. Speak to our situation. Speak a right now relevant word to us. That when we leave this sanctuary, when we log on Facebook Live and YouTube, we know that we have heard a word from you. I pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. And he still chose me. Just let that marinate in your spirit just for a moment. And he still chose me. And he still chose me. If you remember last Sunday, I, I preached about, as Minister Pacheco said, take a stone. Amen. And we talked about the Israelites. First of all, how God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, out of bondage in Egypt. And then God brought them over a, across the Red Sea. Yes. They end up in the wilderness and they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Yes. And now they have, they went to the edge of the wilderness, standing before the Jordan River. And God told them, send the priests first and let them stand in the water. Yes. And once my presence stand in the water, the water will separate. And Israelites, you can go across on dry land. But don't forget to take a stone because the stone will remind you yeah. of all of the wonderful acts that I have performed yeah. for you. Please don't forget your stone. Now, Israel, I was there for you. I have did all these wonderful deeds for you. Take that stone to remind you that if God did it back then, he will do it again. If God did it in the Jordan River, he can still do it and will, regardless of what situation we might face. Yeah. Now we come to Judges, chapter number 6. And now for all that the Lord did for Israel, Israel still did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yes, yes. Now one thing that hurt me the most is when people that I have been faithful to and loyal to Turn that back on me. Amen. Have y'all ever been there? Anybody know what I mean? After all you have done for people, prayed for, helped them out, gave to them when you should have kept some things for yourself out of all the stuff you have done for them, and then later on down the road, they decide to turn their back on you. And this is exactly what the Israelites did out of all that the Lord did for them. Brought them out of Egypt. Brought them through the wilderness. Kept them in the wilderness. Brought them through the wilderness. Brought them across the Jordan River. Brought them to their own further land. But yet they decided to do evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord said, all right, since you turn your back on me, I am going to hang you over into the hands of the Midianites for seven years. Wow. They were in oppression, you all, for seven years. Wow. It got so bad, Sister Teresa, that they had to hide in caves. Because the Midianites were there to kill them. So they had to hide in cave because they were fearful for their life. Not only that, any time they planted some crops and any time they planted in their vineyard, what happened was the Midianites and the Amalekites came, their enemies came and they took their crops, which means they had nothing to eat. They encamped around their livestock and their cattle, and they made sure that nothing was left. God has a way to bring you down to your knees. When you forget about God, God will forget about you. And he has a way to bring you down to your knees. He's going to get you down to your knees one way or the other. So the only thing you can do when you get down on your knees is to look up and say, Lord, help me. 
If this was the case, the Lord allowed the Midianites to bring the Israelites down to their knees. And they had to look up and cry out to the Lord. The Lord knows how to get your attention. Can I say that again? The Lord knows how to get your attention. If you forget to pray, if you forget to live for the Lord, if you forget to do what God has called you to do, if you follow other gods, God has a way to bring you down to your knees and to get your attention. Now, the Midianites, excuse me, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They're saying, Lord, help us. We need you, Lord. Help us. I, I know we did evil in your sight, but help us. And guess what the Lord did? The Lord sent a prophet to remind the Israelites, the, the, the tell the Israelites, wait a minute, let me get this straight. Now, the Lord wants to make sure that he understands you right. He brought you out of Egypt. He did all these things for your father. And he did all these wonderful acts. And he even told you, if you don't follow other gods, if you don't do the um, follow after the Malachites, he will keep you. But yet you disobeyed his voice. God gave you warning. God told you what not to do. But yet, let me make sure I got this right now. But yet, you decided, you decided to disobey God. And in return, you are suffering the consequences. Now keep that in mind as we move to our text this morning. The angel of the Lord is sitting under Terebeth. Terebeth is nothing but a tree. Okay. It's nothing but a tree. And these, it's a type of tree that's found in the south and the east of Palestine. It's just a plain, just talking about the angel was sitting under a tree. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, when I first read that, I said, all right, the Lord is getting ready to do so. Because the Lord always, not always, but the Lord often met his children under a tree. Abraham. He met Abraham under a tree. A tree. Yes. God revealed Himself to Abraham under a tree. Deborah, in the book of Judges, yes. God revealed Himself to Deborah under a tree. Yes. And now here's Gideon in chapter number six. God is revealing Himself to Gideon from under a tree. Yes. The angel is sitting under the tree watching Gideon. Yes. Beat wheat mm. in the wild. Yes. Get in, a former is beating wheat mm. in a wild press. Minding his own business, yeah. not bothering anybody. Yeah. Minding his own business. And here is Gideon beating wheat. In the wine press. Yeah. Now, I want you to understand this because if you don't understand this, you might miss this whole story because you normally don't beat wheat in a wine press. Oh. Wheat is beaten on the threshing floor. Yeah. Yeah. It's a diagram on your screen to show you what a, th a threshing floor flow is what a farmer would do. He would get his grain. He would get his harvest. He would get his wheat, gather it all together, put it on the sled, and what would happen was he would get something like a rake, if you will, compare it to a rake, something with sharp teeth, and he would get his grain of harvest, and he would beat it. Loose it up. Beat it. And after he beat it, he would take this grain, a uh, harvest grain, and he would get it, put it in a bag. And what he would do after that, he would throw it up in the air. Uh -huh. And the wind will blow away the things he won't, can't use. Right. Uh -huh. And what he can use will fall yeah. on the threshing floor. All right. The wind, hallelujah, <laughs> the wind of God will blow away everything that the 
Jehovah could not use. And everything he could use will fall to the floor. The wind, hallelujah, will blow away everything that the former could not use. And what he could use will fall on the floor. I don't know about anybody else, but I need the wind of God to blow in my life right now. Blow away everything that's no good to me. Blow away everything that I can't use. And God, whatever you want me to have in this season, let it fall on my left so I can use it for your glory. But yet time was so hard that Gideon, keep in mind now the Midianites is taking their food, the Israelites and Gideon food and all that. And so now time was so hard that Gideon could not beat his weed on the thresher floor. Instead, he beat it in the wine press. Jesus. It's a diagram on your screen talking about a wine press. Normally, typically in a wine press, if you will see right here, they would get the grapes and men would step on the grapes. Step on it. Step on it. Step on the grapes. And right here is a filter. It's a filter right there, and only the juice of the grape will fall, would go into this area. And after fermentation, they will put it in a jar so they can use it or drink it. But yet, here is Gideon being weak in a wild race. Yet here is Gideon being weak in a wild race. Why did he beat wheat in a wine press? He beat wheat in the wine press because he had to make sure that he that the Midianites did not see him nor hear him. If he went to the threshing floor and started beating his wheat, the Midianites would expect somebody to go to the threshing floor with their harvest and they would take their harvest. But Gideon went to an unexpected place so the Midianites could not find him. He went to an unexpected place and started beating his harvest in the wine press. For, for, for the next few minutes, I do want to minister to those of you who feel like Gideon. You are doing what you normally do in an abnormal place. Beating wheat was normal for Gideon. He normally, go back, he normally did it on the threshing floor. He normally did it on the threshing floor, but instead he was doing something normal, go to the wine press, in an abnormal place. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just want to minister to those of you who are doing what you normally do yeah. in an abnormal place. Pastor Colors, I'm doing what I normally do. I'm doing what God has called me to do. I'm doing what I normally do. But something about this place feels different. Yes. Something about this place that I'm in in my spirit life yes. feels different. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it feels so different, you all, that while other people are spending, I'm too busy beating my week and saving it. Because I know the enemy is somewhere seeking whom he made the body. Oh, I wish I had a church. While other people are spending, you are beating your little small harvest and you are trying to save it because you know the enemy is somewhere around the corner. You know the enemy is seeking whom he made the body. Yes, sir. You're beating your wheat. In the wine press. Pastor Colors, why do I feel like this in my spirit? Why am I doing something normal in an abnormal place? Something different. It's something that's different about this. I, I'm going to tell you why. The reason is the Lord wants you to see that what you are doing and your assignment where you are is done. I'm going to say that again. Mm. What you are doing is done mm. and where you are is done. Mm. God is calling you to another place. Oh, 
God is calling you higher. Yes. You cannot continue to do what you normally do when God is calling you to go to another level in Him. Jesus. Let me prove it to let me prove it to you in the text. Gideon was minding his own business. That's just like God. You minding your own business, not bothering about it, minding your own business. But the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon yes. and said this. This this is what he said to Gideon. He said, the angel said, the Lord is with you, oh mighty man of valor. Yes. Don't miss that, y'all. Yes. Yes. The Lord is with you, oh mighty man of valor. But Gideon said, I'm a former, but the Lord said, you're a warrior. Gideon said, but I'm a foyer, but God said you a warrior. Gideon said, but I'm a former, but God said you a warrior. Gideon said, you I'm a former, but God said I'm you a warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are y'all following me? Gideon, what you are doing right now and where you are right now, your season is over. I'm calling you a mighty man of valor. I'm calling you a warrior while you still trying to be a farmer. Jesus. I have chosen you. Yes. I have chosen you. I have chosen you yes. to be a warrior yes. while you still trying to be a farmer. My God, my God. Mm -hmm. And Gideon said, please, Lord. <laughs> Jesus. If you telling me to be a former, a, a warrior, not a man of valor, you tell me to be a, a, a former, a warrior, excuse me, how can that be? Don't even come to me talking about this Lord stuff. I don't want to hear it. Because if the Lord is real, why in the world he allowed all of this to happen to us? Uh-oh. He said, now if the Lord is real, why would he allow the Midianites and the uh, Amalekites to come and steal our crop, steal our harvest? If the Lord is real, why in the world he will allow this to happen to me or to us? That sounds just like us today. People ask, well, if your God is real, why he allowed this to happen? Why he allowed that to happen? Why he allowed this to happen? Why he allowed that to happen? And if I can be quite honest with you, when people ask me those questions, it kind of get on my nerves. Because how in the world can you do the very thing that God tells you not to do and expect him to bless you in the way? Can I say it again? How in the world can you do the very thing that God told you not to do and expect him to bless you in a way? Our God is a covenant God. Somebody shout a covenant God. What I mean about he's a covenant God, he makes covenant with his children. And there are two different types of covenant. There's a lot of covenants. But we can bring them, break them down into two categories. Yes. You have unconditional covenants yes. and conditional covenants. Yes. We do well with the unconditional covenants because God bless us in spite of our action. Amen. In other words, God bless us in a way. God bless us in a way. No matter what we do with the unconditional covenants, God will bless us in a way. But what we have the issue in is with the conditional covenants. When you have to keep your end of the covenant and God will keep his end of the covenant. Are y'all with me so far? If you do the very thing that God tells you not to do, God said you have broken the covenant. See, see we shout and most of the conditional covenant is kind of if-then statement. If you do this, then God will do this. And if you do that, then God will do this. And Elder Jones, we shout over the then statement, but we don't want to submit to the if part of the sentence. 
Can I say that again? Yes. We shout over the then part of the covenant, yes. but we don't submit to the if part yes. of the covenant. Pastor Cullis, what are you talking about? Let me show you. Can I teach you a little bit? Yes. Then I'm going to let y'all out. We don't make sure that after this you're fixing that son. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Oh Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm going somewhere. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. And it reads, And if, yeah. somebody shout if, yeah. here's, a, um, here's a conditional covenant, yeah. if you forget the Lord your God and go after all the God and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today, today that you should surely perish. Here's the if part. Go back. Here's the if part of the covenant. Yeah. If you forget him, then the Lord said you will surely perish. Sure. Sure. Go on. Go on. Sure. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Amen. Let me give you another one. I think it's Deuteronomy chapter number 11, verse 13. And 15. And if, somebody shout if, yeah. you will indeed obey my commandments that I command you today. To, here we go. Here's what we got to do. Right. To love the Lord your God uh -huh. and to serve him, nobody else, yeah. with all your heart and with all your soul. Yes. Oh. <laughs> he will then, here we go, then, here's the deal part, he will give you the rain of your land in its season, the early rain, the later or later rain, that you may gather in your grain and your wine and your oil. God said, if you love me with all your heart, with all your soul, and you serve me, God said, I'll make sure you don't lack in no area of your life. But what you got to do, you have to serve him and worship him and love him with all your heart. Then God will make sure that you will lack no good thing. I wish I had a church. But if you serve other gods, worship the world, live like the world, talk like the world, dress like the world, live like the world, God will make sure that you will lack in every area of your life. And the Lord had made this covenant with Israel. Saying, if you if you follow other gods, I'm going to make sure that you your crops are destroyed. God will not override your consequences. Can I say it again? God will not override your consequences. God will not override your consequences. If God gives you free will, yes. let me say this, God will give you free will. Yes. And whatever you decide to do, you got to also make sure, whenever you decide to do something, you got to also say, whatever action is an equal and opposite reaction, it's consequences for every decision that I make. And Israelites, since you did evil in the sight of the Lord, the Lord turned his back on you. And he allowed the Midianites to come and to destroy your crops. Gideon, that's the answer. And that is why the Lord did that. Now, you should remember all that the Lord did for you, your fathers and your ancestors in Egypt. But yet the Israelites turned their back on God. Yes. But thank God for God grace and his mercy. Yes. God said, Gideon, I have chosen you. Yes. Hallelujah. I have chosen you yes. to deliver the Israelites out of the hands of the Midianites. Verse number 14, look at this, and I'm about to close. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hands of the Midians. Do not, or don't, or do not I send you. Here we go. Verse number 15 is where I want you. And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? 
My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. Lord, how can I do something like this? I'm a nobody. My, my clan is the weakest um, in Manasseh. My father is poor, but yet you chose me. <laughs> In spite, my, in spite of my weakness, hallelujah, yes. but yet you still yes. chose me. Yes. I don't have the pedigree or the background. My, my family is not rich. My family is not the strongest, but yet you still chose me. Yes. 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 My and he still chose me. Yes. <laughs> and he still chose me. Hallelujah. And he still, hallelujah, hallelujah. chose me. Yes. I have some weakness, but he still yes. chose me. I don't have it all together like Gideon said. I don't have the money. I don't have the background, but yet you yes. still yes. chose hallelujah. me. Oh, I'm about to close. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, the second manifestation of God, said something. You all, it's a scripture that I love to bring this on home yes. and show you what I want you to see. In John chapter number 15, verse number 16, it says this. Jesus said this. <laughs> Ye have not chosen me, Amen. but I have chosen you yes. and ordained yes. you. Yes. Let me start right there. Yes. God said, you didn't choose me. I know we say, I found the Lord Jesus just in time. That's a good song, but that's theologically incorrect. Yeah, yeah. The Lord, you did not choose the Lord. The Lord chose you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So true. My God, my God. Despite your mistakes, Jesus. he still chose you. Yes. Despite your flaws, he still chose you. Despite of your past, he still chose you. Despite of your weakness, he still chose you. Despite of your background, he still chose you. What did he choose me to do? That you should go and bring forth fruit. That your fruit should remain. That your fruit should remain. That your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, yes, he may give it to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You all, it should give you purpose for living every morning when you open up your eyes because of sin and you look up towards heaven. And you should give God the praise. Yes. Because he still chose you. Yes, to see another day. Yes. He looked over your faults. Yes. He looked over your flaws. Yes. He looked over your failures. Yes. And he chose you for such a time as this. Yes. And despite your imperfection, a perfect God still chose you. God knows y'all that we have some weakness. Hallelujah. I said God knows we have some weakness. He doesn't care about your background. He doesn't care about what you have and what you don't have. He knows that. He chose you before the foundation of the world. But before your mother got with your daddy. He still chose you. Gideon said, Thank you. but I'm weak. I don't have it all together. Yes. I don't have the anointing to do that. Yes. I'm, I'm a former, but you calling me a warrior. Yes. Nobody in my family fights. <laughs> I'm weak. I don't have it all together. Amen. And I want to tell you something. If you show me your weakness, yes. I can show you God's strength. Yes. If you show me what you don't have together, I can show you what God is doing in your life. Some of you trying to look at what you got together. 
to fight this devil. Somebody shout, I got a devil to fight. I don't want y'all to think that the devil is somewhere clapping his hand. He's probably not messing you, messing with you right now, but he's sitting back waiting. He's doing some things you can't see. And at a certain time, he don't come knocking at your door. But tell somebody, I'm chosen by God to fight this devil. I'm chosen by God to fight this devil. Things are turning around for you. 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 I said things are turning around for you. Because of you, things are turning around for you. Brother Jeremy is coming to lead us into worship. And one thing I like about this story, you all, the Lord didn't touch Gideon. The Lord didn't lay his hand on Gideon. The only thing the Lord did was spoke a word over Gideon's life. And say, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. To go to the enemy's camp and let the devil know that enough is enough. To let the enemy know your games are over. Declare over your life, say, I am the one, am the one. that the Lord has chosen. Lord. Say it again, I am the one, am the one. that the Lord has chosen. Lord. And he still Lord. chose me. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
our faults. Yes, God. Yes, God. Over our mistakes. Over our failures. Yes, over our mishaps. Yes, and you still chose us yes, to do what we are doing. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for clarity. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you are moving us. Where we are right now is definitely not our end in place. You have placed an anointing upon us that when we walk in the room, demons got to flee. When we open up our mouth, demons tremble. We thank you. Have your way in our life. As we go into the enemy's camp and defeat the enemy with one strike, we're going to do it in your strength and we're going to do it in your power. God, we thank you. I say, God, we thank you. We thank you for choosing us for such a time as this. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you don't know Jesus today, won't you come? If you don't know Jesus or if you want to make true worship church your home, won't you come? True Friendship Church will be transforming the world through the word of God one life at a time. Won't you come? Hallelujah! Well, let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are a shred and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all shout it. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you. See you next Sunday. God bless you.